Are you on the hunt for a new math curriculum? Or maybe you've heard of Saxon and are a little bit interested, but it sounds super intimidating. Let's take a look at what it's really like. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a Christ following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. So I homeschooled my son all the way through preschool. Then when kindergarten came and it came time to choose an actual math curriculum, I was looking around and Saxon caught my eye. Why? Because I used it in public school and I was just familiar with it. And so I thought, hey, I remember using this. I bet I could use it with him. That's not really a great reason to choose a curriculum, but I've not regretted it at all. We love Saxon around here. That being said, he is in his fifth year of using it. So he used it kindergarten, first, second, third, and now fourth grade. Saxon Math has been around for, I'm pretty sure, 35 years is what I read. So it's been around a while. And it is a spiral approach. So instead of a mastery approach where you would learn one thing and just keep doing that one thing until you have it mastered and then move on to the next, you spiral up. And so you come back, if this is that one thing, you circle around and then you move up a little bit and circle around, move up, circle around. That way you keep getting that thing over and over again. And you do eventually master it, but you don't just learn it, then forget it, which is what I tend to do. And so I didn't want that for my boys. Now I know mastery approach works with some people. It's just for me and my kids, this is what works best. Now I've heard some people say, I had no idea when I first started, but I've heard some people say that Saxon is very rigorous and very um, dry and in depth, and it can be. However, we find it super thorough, but very adaptable. You don't have to do everything exactly as they lay it out. If you do, you will spend a lot of time on math, and maybe that's something you're looking for. I know lots of people who numbers are their thing, and they love that. So Saxon just gets right to the point. It's not colorful, there's not a lot of fluff and frills. It gets right down to the point. And I like that when it comes to math. I don't think that's a disadvantage at all. And I also love that they use a lot of real life examples. I know this isn't the only math curriculum that does that, but some math curriculums, you're just reading along, trying to follow along, wondering how the heck am I ever going to use this? And sometimes in math, you just can't avoid that. We gotta do what we gotta do. But they use a lot of real life examples. So instead of just saying, let's learn to add decimals, they talk about, okay, you paid for something with a $5 bill that was $2.45. Let's see how much change you need to get back. Things like that that you really will need to learn in the real world. So I'm gonna flip this camera around and show you the different parts of the curriculum that you will get if you order this. All right, guys, I know this is really close up there, but I want you to actually be able to see inside. So this is the Saxon Math 5 for main text. So this is where you will get all of your instruction as well as all of your assignments. So it's all in here, all in one. So in the beginning, you will see the table of contents where it just tells you what the lessons are going to be about and it shows you where the investigations are going to be. Then there's a letter from the author, preface, talks about their philosophy. Then it shows you all of their components, the program overview. Now, like I said, it tells you exactly how it was created to be used. I don't use it that way. I don't know many people that use it exactly how it was written to be used, but it's there if that's what you want to do. So it tells you exactly, you know, warm up, then new concepts down here, lesson practice, mixed practice. So if you follow this, it could be up to 15 plus 15. So it's 30, 40 minutes plus another 40 minutes. So that would be 80 minutes. So an hour and 20 minutes in math, if you want to spend that much. Here's the first lesson. I'm going to go ahead and move into like a lesson in the middle of the book to give you a better idea of what that looks like. And then at the very back, you have additional topics and practice. So here are some topics that may not be covered in the main text and you might want to cover them. Roman numerals, if that's important to you. Um, if you want your child to learn the base five, then you will do that here also. Then these are for certain lessons. It's not for every lesson, but for certain lessons, there are supplemental things. So if your child is having a really hard time on something and you just think they need that extra practice, you can have them do these. 
So far we haven't really needed to do this yet. At the very end, which is also helpful, you have the glossary of all the different terms. And I like it because it's not just the definition, but it also has, you know, pictures to show you what they actually mean. And then there is the index. So you can find what page certain concepts are covered on. And that is it. Like I said, you also get those facts practice cards, which are just flashcards that help them learn multiplication facts and things like that. This will also come with your solutions manual. So here there are the answers for the warm up. So that's that practice that they do in the very, very beginning of the day. Then there's the lesson practice. So after you've taught the lesson, they do the lesson practice. And then there is the mixed practice, which is like our homework section. Then toward the back here, you will have your um, fact sheet. And so each day you, except for investigation days, you will have a test and it is timed and just see how many you can get. And then here are the test solutions. You will also get a packet that has your tests in it and any sort of extra sheets that you will need for different assignments. But I have my son work his tests and his homework inside of one red notebook that he just keeps all throughout the year. So that way it's all in one spot and I can skim through easily. All right, now that you've seen all the parts, I'm also going to show you how we would typically go through a lesson in one day. Um, we would start with the mental math. Mental math, and you can do facts practice if you want. This is when you would give them the timed facts practice sheet. Then you do this mentally, and then there's usually some sort of pattern or problem solving, like a word problem or something down there. Then when it's time for him to come and do math with me, we grade this together. Make sure that he understood all of that. And while he's doing that, I would be grading his homework from the night before. And then together we would go over the lesson. And then we discuss the new concept. So this, it tells you exactly what to say. It tells you, gives you the examples to show. Which as he grows, he can probably start doing this himself. Right now we do it together. And then there's a lesson practice. This is where they practice what they have been learning for that specific day. So he does that alone, but we go over it and grade it together to make sure that he's really understanding that concept. So usually when my son does this, he does it immediately following our lesson. I will grade it with him so that we can correct any mistakes and make sure that he actually has it. After that, he has his assignment, which is the mixed practice. This is usually about 30 problems. So what I do is he only has to do evens or odds. So if he gets anything lower than a B on his homework the night before, then he has to do all of the problems the next time because I know that either he's not understanding something or he's trying to cut corners and rush through things, which is typically the case for this child. Um, so I want him to really slow down and make sure that he's understanding what we're learning. Then his mixed practice is what he uses as homework. Of course, we're homeschoolers, so all work is homework, I guess. Tests. These are spaced out about every 10 lessons. And then every so often scattered throughout the book, you have these investigations. This is where we go in a little deeper on one subject. There's no worksheets or book work to do with it. We just work through it all together. It's a really in-depth lesson. Typically, we use some sort of manipulative or something like that. But that day, there will be no workbook to do. So you have more time to just sit down and focus on the lesson. So there's a lot more to read and talk about than a typical lesson, but that's why they call an investigation. You're kind of going deeper into the things that you have learned. So needless to say, we love Saxon. I understand not everyone does, but it is definitely right up our alley. And my boys actually both look forward to math. We don't have to have all the frills and the pictures and all the things for them to like it. So next year, I definitely see us moving on to 6-5 for my fourth grader who will be in fifth grade next year. And my younger son will be moving into Saxon 3. If you would like to see what Saxon 2 looks like, I will stick an iCard up here. I did a review of it, a look inside. I think I even did a lesson with us so you can see how we use it, you know, in action. All that to say, it is a very rich and solid curriculum and I highly recommend it. So comment down below with what math curriculum you use and why you like it. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And Tuesday, I will be coming out with a new video all about how we handle screen time in our home. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.